Better reporting in Google Ads is always a good thing. So we were happy to hear that Google announced full placement reporting for the search partner network for search, shopping, and app campaigns. It's not a robust report by any means, so this may not be a long video. However, I think it's important to go back and really understand what the search partner is, how we typically see it perform within our client accounts, and then where this report lives. Then, of course, the most important question, what can we do with this information in this report? So with all that being said, let's get started. I'm going to start this video going back a little bit for those who are new to paid media and really discuss what the search partner network is. Odds are, if you've been in this industry for years, you're already familiar with it. So if you just want to skip to the report and be like, Joe, just show me where I can see the placements, jump to this time that you see on the screen right now. We'll also have a timestamp link in the video description. Hopefully that saves you some time if you just want to get to the report. But going back to the beginning, search partners make up of a ton of website and apps that don't live on Google properties. However, they can serve Google search ads. So things like Google Maps, Google Images, YouTube, those are all considered Google properties. That's not part of the search partner network, even though they can show text ads. If I open up this other tab, here we see ask.com, formerly Ask Jeeves. It's still around as a search engine, but it's powered by Google. It's really important if you're new to paid media to understand that this exists in the first place. On top of that, if I actually head into an account, I'm just in our demo account and I'm building a new search campaign. See, it says search up here. Let's jump ahead to campaign settings. And it's been like this for a while, but when you start building new search campaigns in Google ads, the search partners network is automatically checked. So if you're not unchecking this box when you're building a campaign, your search ads will automatically start appearing on a ton of other websites that are not Google properties. So then the question is, how do we typically see it perform? Well, let's look at a few accounts. To find out how they perform, I'm in the campaign view, go to segment, and there you will see network with search partners. Right now I am just looking at search campaigns, so it's easy to see. And while we don't have them on in all of these accounts, I purposely pulled all time just to show you what we typically see. So for this first example, it's a brand campaign. Search partners performs okay. That's because there's just not a lot of volume. Cost per conversion is cheaper than Google search. So in this case, there's no concern. Other times we see it in the third example, not a lot of volume, but we're leaving it running because it hasn't spent nearly as much as the average cost per conversion for this campaign. In this account, it's working just fine. If I go to another account, again, this one's looking at all time to get a bigger picture, and I wanna focus on the DSA campaign. Because when I see results like this, to me, it's a big red flag. DSA can already go wild with relating search terms to content that's on your page. And yes, it can be a good research tool to help find new keyword ideas. However, when I see a good chunk of spend go to the search partners within a particular search campaign, that's when I want to dig in further. Because let me change the date range to just the past 30 days, and that campaign moved up to the top now. Yes, we've already paused search partners in this campaign. Why? Because when we actually looked in the CRM for the conversions, in quotes, that were coming from this campaign, they were all junk. And with the maximized conversion bid strategy, we're pretty much telling Google, optimize for more of this crap. So you may be asking, well, then why do you have search partners running in the first place? Because originally it was working fine. And this is what we've seen in a lot of other accounts is within the past three, four months, all of a sudden we're seeing a lot more junk and spam and bot type traffic coming through from search partners. And we can prove it because all of our clients have CRMs connected with Google ads and the form fills are all just gibberish or fake emails. Is Google trying to catch all this type of stuff before it happens? Yeah, I honestly think they are, but I don't think the tools are sophisticated to even catch it, and it never will be able to catch it 100%. So look at your segment reports for your campaigns. If historically, Search Partners has just never been converting for you, and you've been wasting spend, turn it off. Or if you're seeing conversions, you want to check on the quality, go back to your CRM. I primarily work with lead gen accounts, so we don't get the revenue data automatically back in all the time. Could be different if you're e-commerce and you're seeing the revenue come back in. If it's bringing you revenue, well, yeah, of course, you want to leave it on. But to turn it off, highlight over the campaign, click on the gear, that'll open up your settings, and there you will see networks, and there you can uncheck the box. I know I picked a different campaign, I just wanted to show you where it is, but easy enough to change. Now, what about this report? Let's start talking about that. As I said in the intro, the placement report for the search partner network is available for search, shopping, and app campaigns, since those three campaign types can appear in search results. Now in the benefits, Google's saying you get clear insights, better control, and they're boasting a little bit too much with those claims. Is it better than nothing? Yes. Do we get full transparency? No. All right, so let's look where we can find this report. 
And now this report does live within insights and reports, but it doesn't live in this when and where ad showed section. I would love if it eventually got moved here as a default report, maybe that'll come later on, but we actually need to go to the report editor. And then when we scroll down, here's where we see when and where ad showed. Don't choose placements. That's going to be for display and video campaigns. We want content suitability. While I have the ad group names blurred out, as well as a good chunk of the campaign name, for this account, the campaign type leads off the campaign name. So we can see it is a search campaign. But if we look at all the web pages to the left, and yeah, we see YouTube on there a couple times, but we also see a bunch of random websites. And look at these spammy type websites that are in here. Now the thing with this report, and how I've mentioned several times that it's lacking, is that we only get impression data. I can't add anything else to it. If I go to conversions, you see, it's kind of X'd out. You don't really get any of this information. So to really make it worthwhile, we need conversion information. But I have a feeling Google knows it's not quality traffic. And they don't want to give us that information because they know we'd turn it off pretty quickly. And then Google doesn't make money. Even if you go up to other column options like call details, thinking you can pull some of your ad assets into the mix. Nope, those are all grayed out too. Same with message. And then in case you were wondering, performance, nope, can't even add clicks or costs. At least with click information, you get better understanding if you're wasting spend on it. By default, it's just gonna look at the last 30 days. Let's just go to all time. Again, I've had it paused in this campaign for a while, but we see it's just mostly junk. Keep scrolling down, look at all this. And then that leads to the question, well then what could we really do with this information? A one, if the web pages that you see are just complete spam like this, it's a clear decision to just turn it off. Even if you're segmenting the information, and you're not using a lot of spend on it, why would you wanna use any spend on this? And then just think of all the clicks that you are getting from these spam websites. Whether they're going to your landing pages or not, you're adding all these spammy clicks and bots potentially to your remarketing audiences, and now you're hurting your remarketing campaigns too. Now, if you're hoping that you'd be able to click on these and select them and add them to any sort of content exclusion list like you can with display campaigns, nope, still not an option. Right now, the Search Partner Network is an all or nothing thing. So between just looking at the columns in the main campaign interface, and then looking at the placements that we see with just impression information, you should get pretty clear data just between those two quick views of if you even should be running search partners or not. We used to see a lot more quality in the past from it, and it worked in a lot of accounts. But over time, the quality just continues to get worse as bot or spam traffic continues to increase, and we can prove it with our CRM data with our clients. So that's a quick little update from Google. Hopefully it provides you with some valuable information, but at least it's a report to keep our eye on that hopefully they keep making updates to it and give us more information. I will give Google credit for that between Performance Max and now this, we are starting to get better reporting back into the system. So let's keep encouraging Google to do that. If you have any other questions on the Search Partner Network or this new placement report for the Search Partners, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.